Hi, my name is Brian Dean from Amulet Studios, and in this video, I'm going to go over how I made the space station for the Astronauts promo video. Let's make a space station. All right, so in this video, I'm going to go over the methods I used to make the space station for the promo video. I'm just going to kind of show you uh, what I was doing, the tools that I used, the methods and stuff that got me to where I needed to be. Now, there was a lot of work that went into this, and it all had to be done relatively short amount of time, which means I really had to get as much done as efficiently as possible. I had to kind of design on the fly. Now, these tools that I'm going to show you really helped me do that. They helped me iterate in real time. And this space station really only had to look good for one shot. So this really just helped me kind of get everything looking good just for that one shot. So now let's start off in Maya, where I built the basic shape for the space station. So here in Maya, this is the base shape of the space station that I built off of. And how I made this was just kind of creating a bunch of bevels and extrudes, and I'll kind of go through that process really quick. So let me take this and we will just hide this and I will create a new cylinder. And now we wanna make sure we have enough geometry so we get a nice round shape. We'll be going into Unreal and we'll be using Nanite so we don't really have to worry too much about the polygon count. And this is also for cinematic and not for games. So performance isn't really an issue. So we just wanna make sure we have enough polygons to give us some good quality. So I will go into our attribute editor here and we will go into our uh, settings here. And I'm just going to crank up, we'll crank this up to say 60. That looks like it should work. And then for subdivision height, we'll, add, so we'll just give ourselves a few more edge loops there to work with. And we could round this off and we'll just add some more geometry there. In fact, let's even increase that a bit. And let's just increase this so we get a little more evenly spaced polygons. And now we're just gonna get a basic kind of space station shape going. Now, one of the reasons why I went with a circular shape is because of the tools I'll be using in Unreal. Um, and I knew that what I was going to be doing, the technique I'd be using would work good with a with a circular shape. So that's why I was going for this this kind of round rounded shape. Okay, so now let's just try and get a basic shape. So I'm just gonna go into my uh, right view here and basically we'll just start grabbing some polygons and kind of reshaping this a bit. Okay, so now we can just kind of go in and start adding maybe some window sections here. So the way I'm gonna do this, uh, I'm just gonna select the edge here and I'm gonna hit Control B to bevel it. And I'll just adjust this until I get something that's kind of the right size and I'll just grab my faces, hit control E to extrude. And we'll just kind of set this back a little bit and I will apply uh, the light material, which was what I made for the windows. And now we kind of have this little uh, window section and we can go through and do the same thing if we want to just add a new edge loop. So I'll put an edge loop here, we'll bevel this and we'll do the same thing, we'll select spaces we'll extrude them and add the windows now the other thing you might want to do is fix some of these edges you know these really harsh edges kind of make it feel very cg ish so we might just want to kind of round off some of these edges so if i select this i'll hit b and i'm going to add some more segments here maybe we'll make this a little smaller and kind of add some segments in there to smooth out this corner and that feels a little nicer. And same thing with some of these edges here. I just like to kind of bevel any like really harsh edges. Extrude and bevel. Extrude. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Space station, a space station. Oh yeah, uh -huh. a space station. Now, once I had this where I liked it, I brought it into Blender. Now, I just want to say the reason why I'm doing this in Maya instead of just doing the whole thing in Blender is because I've been using Maya forever. I'm just used to using it. Uh, I've never been able to really make the switch. So I kind of hop back and forth between the two, depending on where I'm most proficient. So anyway, now we're going to take that model into Blender and we're just going to break up the surface a little bit with some sci-fi panels. Oh, yeah. 
Okay, and the way that we're gonna add these uh, sci-fi panels is with a geometry modifier that I got on the Blender Market. This is an add-on called Plating Generator and Greebles. What is the plating generator? The plating generator is a blender add-on for 3D modelers and concept artists that adds paneling patterns and can add multiple objects onto flat or curved mesh surfaces. It uses specially designed algorithms to generate different patterns from selected faces. Now there's a pretty good documentation process and a video for how to get this installed and up and running. I've already gone through it and done that. So we're just going to get right into it and add the sci-fi panels. All right, so I'm gonna select my object here, the space station, and we're going to go to the modifiers tab and I'm going to click on add modifier. Now we will find it down here, the plating generators. And I am going to go with panels. Now, once I do that, we can see that our surface is populated with this paneling effect. Over here, we've got all the different settings, and this is how we'll dial it in to get the exact look we're looking for. Now, again, on the page for this add-on, there are some links to some videos which give really good in-depth tutorials on how all these settings work. Now, by just playing with this a little bit, we can just kind of try and get the settings closer to what we want. Turn on repeats, and this will give us uh, some, more, some more panels here. And we can see here that we've probably got a little too much um, extrusion happening. So we can kind of change that here. The, let's see, uh, maximum height, if we reduce that. So we can have those panels lifting off as little or as much as we want. And again, we can just kind of look at the surface here. I'll turn off the overlays. So we're just trying to get like a nice breakup of the surface. You can just kind of play with these settings until you kind of get something that you're happy with. I'll just load up the uh, final version of the space station model that I used and show you what that looked like. So this is the final version that I used for the Unreal scene. So you can see there's, you know, just some nice variation across the surface here, just enough to give us a little bit of detail. We're not really going for anything hyper realistic, just something, you know, kind of stylized with a bit of a cartoony look. And so once you've got this to where you're happy with it, then we'll just save this out and we'll head on over into Unreal. Now let's go into Okay, so here we are in Unreal and here is my space station here, my base mesh with my sci-fi panels. If we zoom in here, we can see what the panels look like. So really all we need to do is just make the space station look good for this one shot. So we're gonna add all the detail where we need it to based on where the camera goes for this one shot. And in order to add the extra surface detail, we're going to use a plugin called Pro Instance. So Pro Instance Tools is a lightweight set of tools to control mesh or actor placement using procedural generation with easy to understand and unified settings. They can help you to avoid doing lots of repetitive tasks in level or environment design. So I use this to build the space station. It was actually really, really helpful and it helped me build both the exterior and the interior hallways of the space station set. It saved me an awful lot of time. It's a really powerful tool that really speeds up the workflow when you're designing a set or a level. So let me turn on, let me hop out of my shot camera here and I'm gonna turn on all the extra geometry that was added with the Pro Instance tools. So here you can see all the extra stuff that was added and if we zoom in here, um, all, these, all this extra geometry was added using this Pro Instance tool. So now if we go back into our shot camera, you can see that as we pull up here, we've got all this extra detail that we can look at. If I toggle this off, you can see it's pretty boring and we turn this back on and we have all this extra stuff to look at. Now the space station only had to look good for this one shot so I placed all the extra detail where it would be seen by the camera as it flew across the space station surface. If I hop out of my camera you can see that most of the detail or all of the detail is down here in this lower part. And as we go up here, there's really nothing going on up here because we didn't really see any of this. The camera doesn't ever go up here. We don't ever see it in this shot. So there was no point in adding a lot of extra geometry up here. So basically how this tool works is it just places an array of geometry in a particular pattern, depending on the tool you use. So let me just kind of go off here into space and I will look for Pro Instance and shows up down here. These are all the Pro Instance tools that you have available to you. I will be picking the Pro Instance Circle and I'll just drop this into my scene here. Let's kind of zoom into it. You can see that we have this circle of squares here. These are the default objects that it will place in your array. 
And if we go down here, we can kind of, we can use anything we want here for this. So if I drop in this light model, you can see now we have a circle of these lights. Now we have lots of control. We can control how many of them there are. We can control the angle if we only want a half circle. We can control the radius of the lights. And we can also control the orientation. So if I come down here into the uh, rotation offset, um, we can rotate all of these in any particular direction. Now, if we want them to be oriented towards themselves, so they kind of uh, go in a circle pattern, like a radial orientation, we can just simply rotate to actor and select itself. And now it will kind of orient to the center here. Now we want these to face outside. So we could do the uh, rotation offset. Let's just flip these around 180 degrees. And now we have a bunch of lights arranged in a circle. And essentially we're going to use this technique to place a lot of geometry around the hull of the space station. So that's how I built up all this extra detail on the space station. I just used that tool to layer uh, lots of different objects on here. Now, all these models were taken from various different asset packs I had. I just kind of grabbed things that I thought would look cool. Uh, some things were kind of scaled, like this is actually a light, this object here. Um, this was a tripod light from uh, an asset pack that I bought, and I just kind of scaled it up really big to kind of make it look like these power rods that are coming out from the uh, from the center. And then of course I added like lots of lights, uh, these kind of animated lights, there's just a, a color that's being animated across the UVs to kind of give it this like pulsating uh, power rod kind of feel. Same thing up here, like these are emissive materials to kind of give it the feel that there's these lights all over the space station. So the same thing, like all these objects here were just placed with the, uh, with the pro instance tool, just layering up lots of different geometry to kind of give a lot of different detail on here. So not only did I use Pro Instance to create all the exterior detail on the space station, but I also used it to create the interior as well. So if I zoom in here to our corridor, this entire interior was made using the Pro Instance tool as well. Like everything that's in here was placed using that same tool. So for instance, if I want to add some more pipes in here, I could just select the pipes and we could just duplicate this. And let's just kind of move it out a bit and we'll maybe pull it down and maybe push it out a little more. And so now we have some pipes along the outside of the corridor. Maybe they're a little too big and we can still make as many changes as we want. We can reduce the scale. These were scaled up so we can maybe put them back down to uh, one. Now they're pretty small. Maybe we'll go to two. And uh, now we'll need to increase the amount we have to make sure that they all connect. Um, and this is where you might want to just, since we don't need this to go all the way around, we could reduce the angle to only be 180 degrees. And then we'll just rotate it around so that we have it here. And then we can bring this back down. And so now we've got uh, another row of pipes here. So that made it very easy to just kind of uh, arrange things here. And it would have been really difficult to place things in a, in a perfect circular pattern here if I had to kind of place everything by hand and do all the rotations. But this, this created the entire thing for me. It made it very easy to edit. It was very quick. Um, I could iterate very quickly. And that's kind of what I needed to do on this scene. I needed to be able to iterate very quickly and kind of make sure that everything looked good um, on a per shot basis. Now, also, if you needed to bake these for any reason, that's that's possible as well. If I select this row of walls here, I can come down here to the bake instances. And now if I hit bake and if I turn off this pro instance blueprint here, now we can see each one of these are individual meshes. So if you needed to, you could place everything and then bake them down and then make individual edits as necessary. So this is a pretty useful tool. It came in pretty handy. It was uh, it worked perfectly for what I needed it for and it allowed me to make a pretty cool space station pretty quickly. So that's pretty much it. I just wanted to go over uh, the broad strokes of the techniques and the tools that I was using for uh, this project. As an independent or solo creator, you're often faced with a daunting amount of work that you have to get done and it can be overwhelming. So I highly recommend browsing these various different marketplaces. You can often find lots of asset packs or tools or plugins, lots of different things that can help you with the workflow. And as you could see here, 
even though I'm buying things off the marketplace, I can still apply them in a way that makes them very unique to my situation. They're very customizable. So here I use the Unreal Marketplace, I use the Blender Market, but there's lots of other marketplaces out there. They all have really good stuff. And whenever you're stuck, I highly recommend just going to check them out. So I guess that's about all I have for this video. I had a little bit of fun with the music. Uh, I hope you liked it. If you didn't like it and hated it, well, you can let me know down in the comments below. If you did like it, well, also please let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, then please hit that like button and better yet, subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell. That way you won't miss any future videos.